Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Here we go again. You may have gotten a little bit tired of me with all of my little test lives, but now it's a real live. Did you see us yesterday when we were sideways? Yeah. But guess what? That was Leanne error. It wasn't it wasn't sorry to say human error. I guess I am human. But it wasn't error on any of the technology. It was Leanne and her phone. So we got my sideways fixed. As you can see I have ice cubes again. Iced coffee because it is hot. And then today we were vertical, so or horizontal but upright, whatever. You know, this whole technology thing is just so much. How are you doing? Has technology got you going crazy some days? Flowers got you going crazy? Life got you going crazy? We were just talking about how complicated it is right now. The wedding season is just exploding. So, so, so many flowers to be taken care of. And then the world of technology keeps evolving and changing and adjusting. How do you keep up? It just is almost too much. But today, we're going to embrace technology and embrace the time we have together with flowers. And if you've got flowers and you have technology that's working, life is good. You throw in coffee, life is great. We're going to be talking about the three-minute rule. And you may have saw that when I sent it out, the three-minute rule. And some of you may be aware of it because in years past, I've talked about the three-minute rule. It's a rule that I live by in my life every single day. And it's one I'm going to share with you to see if maybe it will allow you to live the life you want to live, the life you love and the life you dream of. A little bit of housekeeping. If you're on your phone, turn it sideways. It'll be bigger. If you're on your computer, you can go to full screen, and that will make it bigger. If you're on your TV, it's already big and large and all of that. So uh, if you have choices, so that you can get as big or as small as you want. If the comments are in the way, you can swipe it, and it puts it into silent mode, so you can hear me and see me, but you don't see the comments. And then when you want them back, you can put it back. So let's get started. We're going to talk about flowers, and we're going to talk about the three-minute rule. And we've got pretty much a full house. Teacher Michelle's on vacation today, so she's not with us. But in the studio, we have Teacher Carolyn and Teaching Assistant Hitomi and Tech. Uh, Ricky is here, and virtually, we've got Caledonia, and we have Susie. We have Melianne up here, and we have you out there in the virtual world joining us for the Tulip Collaboration. If you haven't done so already, take a moment now and introduce yourself. Put your Tulip icon in there and let us know where you're from. And then start watching everybody's comments. You might meet a new friend. You'll discover that you know somebody from somewhere, sometime. For those of you that are in the Florida side of the world, I'm coming to see you next week there. We'll be at the Society of American Florists Convention in Orlando. So we'll be doing some lives from there and hope to see some of our tulip friends in Orlando while we're there. So if you're in that area, reach out. I'd love to get together. For this first design, I picked a really tall base, but I didn't want to just keep going and get out of the, TV, the screen and just over tall and then have to hide behind it and look around. So instead, I'm going to go horizontal with this. And if you've done um, our basic floral design class, you've done the horizontal arrangement. It's one of the things we do in week three. Uh, it's one of my personal favorites because it kind of twists your perception of flowers because you're always thinking, oh, go up, go up. Sometimes you want to go out. Now, to do this one for the mechanics, I decided to use the floral netting. Now, this netting is the colored metallic. This one's gold from the Oasis Company. Now, it does rust, so you can't put it in the water. So, my vase only has water up to here. So my flowers have to be down with their stems below this level. So there's no water in this upper portion at all. That way I can put the floral netting in the upper portion and wedge it so that it doesn't go all the way down. 
keeping it out of the water so that there's no risk. And I'll even kind of bend it over the lip to make sure that it can't fall in. Because if it falls in and gets rusty, the flowers are not going to last as long. They'll die more rapidly. And nobody wants flowers that die more rapidly. That's a bad thing. You want flowers that last far more than three minutes. Now, the three minute rule started for me back in the early 80s. I worked for a woman named Carla. And Carla believed that you could do anything, absolutely anything, in three minutes if it was important enough to you. So when we closed the flower shop at night, she's like, hey guys, you got three minutes. We're shutting down and out of here. And you know what? We could do it in three minutes. Because if you have a long time, tasks spread out to fill a long time. You know how it is. If you've got all day to clean your house, it takes you all day. If you say, gee, I have company coming in just a minute, it's amazing how much you can get clean when you've got unexpected guests on their way. You're like, oh, we're good people. Three minutes. You can do absolutely everything. And when Carla taught me that in the early 80s, it was life-changing. It was transforming. All of a sudden, I was like, oh my gosh. Three minutes. You can do anything. And so to this day, I use the three-minute theory for many, many, many things. And if you come to flower school, there's some of the syllabus where it's focused on the three-minute theory. I want you to tie bows for three minutes. Just three minutes. You can do anything for three minutes. Then don't do it again. Stop. You're done. Let's do taping for three minutes. Just three minutes. That's all. You can do anything for three minutes. And then stop. That may be a, a technique that you can put in your life. Do you remember these? Teacher Michelle used them last week going upright when she was talking about her porch pots. And they dried, but look at that little curvature. Is that too cool? And I thought, well, that's all dead, so let's throw it away. And then he told me, he says, well, look, those are kind of cool. Maybe we should save them. And I thought, oh, you're right. They are kind of cool. So we did save them. And then I thought, wouldn't those be fabulous if we put them in on the horizontal? It's coming across letting them come through. And then I thought, what about just taking the stem, coming back through on the other side, and establish the line of the design from the very beginning, finding a little spot to put that fat stem to make sure it's going to stay in there where I want it, weaving it across. There we go. While I get a few more stems, Carolyn, you tell me what's going on out there in the world. We've got all kinds of people popping in on both YouTube and Facebook, but on YouTube we've got Chris, Christine and Debbie joining us after a break because they've both been having super busy summers, so they're back online with us. I'm glad your summer is busy, and I'm glad you're back with us. Welcome back. You know, it is hard to fit everything in life in some days. It's like, how much can you do? The reality, if you've got three minutes, you can do anything. Think about it. Put it in perspective of your house again. I talked about if a guest is coming over, you can clean your house in three minutes if you have to. What if you're waiting for the microwave? Think about it. Three minutes when you're waiting for the microwave is an eternity. It's always like, really? It's not done yet? It's three minutes. Why is it not done yet? And yet, it's three minutes. And so if you put that in the perspective of what can you do in three minutes, all of a sudden it's like, wow, maybe I can do this, this, or this, and use that three minutes to actually accomplish something. Maybe it's three minutes to meditate. Three minutes to do absolutely nothing but to think about yourself and relax. Kind of a cool thing. So thanks to Carla, and thanks to my microwave, I live my life in three minute increments, and thanks to flower school, I live my life in three week increments. <laughs> so the world is in threes in most everything I do. So now I've got my line established, 
Okay, it's kind of cool looking. Now, a shout out to Kim. Kim, one of our tulips, sent me this turntable so that we would have a turntable in the studio because you all know I'm taking it out to the classroom and I'm doing something and I never have the turntable. Look at this, we can spin. So thank you, Kim. This is for you. I'm spinning. And that's pretty cool. I get to be the first one to use it. But now this one's going to stay in the studio so that we all have access to it because that's just too much fun. Spin it, baby. Spin it. I love it. So back to the three minutes. What are you going to do in three minutes that might change your life, that might make it spectacular? Because I truly believe you can change your life. And I mean it. You can change your life in three minutes. You know, people say, oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, what am I going to do? How do I do it? And I always say, well, have you got three minutes? That's all you need. You've got three minutes. You can do it. Promise. Anything else happening out there? Well, we have a first timer on um, YouTube. She's from Greece. It's one in the morning there. And uh, I don't know how to pronounce the first name that she has as her screen name, so I'm going to do the last name of Fanny. Oh, that made that easier. Well, welcome from Greece for the first time. How exciting. That's pretty great. So thank you for being here and one in the morning. So you're up late with us. That's grand. And hopefully you'll have fun meeting everybody. Tulips, be sure to say hello to her. Is she on Facebook or YouTube? YouTube. She's on YouTube. Okay, so YouTube people, give her a welcome and a shout out. And if we have any other first timers, please let us know so that we can welcome you and greet you. And let's talk just briefly here about YouTube. I have a request, a very, very important request for each and every one of you is to go to YouTube and subscribe. Take a look at the new header. It's beautiful. It turned out so cool. He told me he worked on it with me, and then David took it and finished it up, and it turned out so lovely. So take a look at the header, and let me know what you think. Do you like it? Would you change it? How would it be different? And then be sure to subscribe, because when you look, you'll see we're almost, almost to 100,000. That is just so mind-boggling to me. That's just so exciting, so spectacular. We're almost to 100,000 subscribers. And I would like to do that by the time class starts in September. September 12th is the first day of class. And I would like to have our 100,000 before then. And if you wanted to really delight me, let's do it really quick, like by September 5. Who knows? But if you could help us reach 100,000 subscribers, we'd be eternally grateful. Uh, it makes a difference for us in the algorithms and such. And if you're part of the Tulip people, you may remember uh, last week when Rick posed the question about posting on social media and whether you like or make a comment or ignore and the whys of each of those things. Because it doesn't cost you any money to like or subscribe or to make a comment, but if somebody is trying to build their flower business and they're trying to expose themselves to more customers, you're taking that moment to like or comment will help their algorithms. And so he was like, how come when I make these posts, sometimes people will say something and other times they just don't say a thing. It just disappears. And I thought, you know, they're so right. We all have that responsibility to help each other and give that little boost to the algorithms. And so when you see somebody posting on their flower shop, just take a moment and do a like or a thumbs up. And for us, I'm just asking if you wouldn't please 
subscribe to the YouTube channel so that we can hit that 100,000. It would be very, very exciting to me. So now I've added in, well, you know what, I'm going to do one more. I have one more here and I wasn't going to do it, but now that I spun it, it's like, ooh, I want this one too. I'm going to put it right here. And I'm creating a horizontal line front to back now and filling in the focal emphasis area. So if you think about your elements and principles, I created the line and then I added the emphasis and then I pulled your eye horizontally front to back to create depth. You know, some people ask me, am I too old to go to flower school? Will I be able to learn my elements and principles? Is it too much? Am I even going to be able to, to focus and do this? And is it too hard? Am I crazy? You know, should I be doing this? And I say, yes, you can do it because you break it down into smaller increments. Back to that three minute theory, BJ, a good friend of mine, had talked to me about how he chose to memorize things. He wanted to make sure that he knew all the proper names of the flowers, which learning the flower names can be a little hard and intimidating at first. And it's like, oh, how do I ever remember all those things? And he had shared with me how he just made sure that he learned a new one all properly once a week, every single week. And then as he got better at it, he moved it to where he did it once a day, every single day, learning a new thing. And how perfect is that? Uh, and I find I do that when I'm teaching with the elements or principles in the classroom. And you have to learn them all. Don't learn them all at once. Learn one. Today, learn one. And then tomorrow, I'll learn another. What you got over there, Tony? Well, aside from Facebook, is asking what is the age requirement for a student to sign up for the beginners class? Ah, for the joining us in the classroom, you have to be 18. We don't have um, anyone under 18. We're strictly adults, so that's the age requirement. There is no top age, though. The top age is you you can come. So it just is that you do have to be 18 years old. So, Other questions? This rose tucked in here is really picking up that sort of lavender of the artichoke and it just makes it kind of fun. Well, you, ju you just said the question. I was going to say, what is that beautiful purple, purple um, Flower. Is it a flower? This would be, I guess it's a flower. It's a vegetable that's gone to flower. So yeah, it's got an artichoke, and then the rose is a minta rose. Um, and then it picks up the purpley, and I don't know what this is. Does anybody know? Uh, millet. millet. It is millet? Okay. So the millet, although it's brown, has a little bit of a purple tinge to it. Of fun, and then you add in the purple flowers, and it really picks that up. Now, back to BJ, he um, is one of the most brilliant people I know, but he works at it. And so, when he's learning something, he focuses on that one name. So, for example, if he's thinking about Bird of Paradise and he wants to remember the botanical name, Stravitzia. Then when he's in his store and he's talking to a customer, he'll say, well, yes, I can make a beautiful arrangement of Bird of Paradise. The botanical name is Strelitzia. Isn't that interesting? And the customer's like, oh, yeah. The customer could care. But they aren't offended by it. And it immediately shows his wisdom and how much he knows about the flowers he's selling. So in the classroom, we do that as well, so that it helps you when you're learning. We'll be talking, okay, now I'm going to place the millet to create a line. So it gets that word in your mouth, in your mind. And then, okay, now I'm going to place the artichokes for the emphasis. Now I am creating depth by pulling front to back. Now I'm adding a little bit of the, I think it was called love grass, um, to create a little bit of hype up through the top. And it's interesting, when I first bought this, it was a little more purpley, and as it has aged, it's gotten more 
tan, so the color is evolving and changing, which is kind of fun. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you think a customer would enjoy that horizontal feel? What would you change? How would you adapt it? I know what I want to do is add a little bit of softness. So I'm stepping to the other side and grabbing just a little bit of the agonis. And let that be softer so that it adds a little bit of draping. Now it needs to get into the water, so I've got to force that down in and angle it. There we go. And then let it drape. It needs to drink. If it doesn't have water, it's going to fade. So it's not one that I can put just across like I did with the millet. It's got to get its stems down into the water level and then drape out so that it goes through. The, um, going to school, I think I've been talking to so many people um, that are joining us in September and October, and there's sort of universal feel, fears of going back to school because it's been so long that it's like, oh, will I be able to learn? And yes, you can. And yes, we'll work with you to help you practice tricks to trick your mind to do it, breaking it down smaller so that it works. And uh, one, thing, one thing you might do too, if you're just looking to learn, be more, do more, expand your skills, go to the YouTube channel. And while you're there, subscribe. But if you look at the playlists, there is the Tulip Tuesday playlist. And on the Tulip Tuesday playlist, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of videos that are all just like one to two minutes. They're those quick, quick, quick videos. And they're all tips and tricks and techniques. So you can learn something in two minutes and then go on. So if you're too busy and you don't have enough time to really focus and study, just dedicate three minutes, because that's my rule, and go to the Tulip Tuesday tips, and there will be a video there that's less than three minutes, and you can be learning, and you can add to your skills. It makes it very much fun. Okay, I'm gonna set that one aside. Do you like it? Would you buy that? If you like it, let us know. If you hate it, let us know, so we'll know we never make this one again. Carolyn, what do you have for us? Yeah, I just received a private message, and they're wondering what would be the benefit of coming to flower school, even if I've had 30 years of experience and know everything? Oh, I love it. Oh, my gosh. That, that's a good one. If I have 30 years of experience and I know everything, <laughs> don't you love it? I know everything, too. Um, the benefit of going to flower school, even after you've been in the industry for a long time, is that there's always something new to learn. And taking the time, I just found this branch and I have to put this in here. I know I said I was done with it, but I, I just decided this branch belonged in here to create a dynamic line going through. So I'm feeding in one side, and then I'm bringing it up and over and back in on the other side to create a little bit of movement. I'm kind of bending it around here just to give it some softness. But coming to flower school after you've already been in the industry, you know questions to ask. You know what you already know and you bring that to the table and it takes you further. So you, you may not want to do basic floral design because if you've been in the industry for 30 years, that's probably going to be a little bit more redundant. But advanced floral design, even if you've been in the industry for 35 years, there's more to learn. Now, some of it you'll know. Some of it you'll go, oh yeah, I know that. Other things you'll go, oh wow, that's a little different than the way I was taught. I think that's kind of cool. That's a different way. 
And it's not wrong, it's not right, it's different. And so you get a little different perspective. So it gives you greater inspiration and allows you to just basically increase your skill set by enhancing what you already know. And I think there's always something new to learn. And it, it benefits all of us. I know I still am constantly looking for things to learn. I'm always studying something new, trying to learn a new word, trying a new trick, experimenting things. If there's a new product, I buy it, take it home and play with it, explore it. If there's a new flower that I've never worked with before, taking it and experimenting with it, seeing how it behaves, because you can learn so much just by watching the various products evolve. You know, how quickly do they um, mature? What do they do when they mature? How do they, how do they evolve? I had some really interesting scabiosa. It was a different variety than I've ever had um, that I found that was local grown. And I, I took it home because I was like, huh. And it was really fascinating to watch the buds open out because they didn't look the same as the ones that were more mature when I bought them. Oh, this is going to take forever. I'm not going to do that. Um, we'll go this way. And if I spill water, so be it. Maybe I'll take it off the turntable so I don't make that all wet. Um, but I don't have the time to use just the test tube filler. Yep, I'm spilling water. Oh, well. But it's fast this way, you know? And then we'll clean it up later. What you got, Carolyn? So this is the opposite of that last question. Fanny, um, who's our, our first timer with us, is a beginner and doesn't know where to start. Ah. So when you are a beginner, definitely start with the basic course because it gets you your nuts and bolts, your foundation, everything you need to just really get by. Let me dump some of this water out so I don't spill it all over myself forever. There we go. Um, but start with the basics of floral design and get your pricing, get your identification, get your elements and principles, your care and handling, um, all your classic design, and then get introduced into wedding and sympathy and contemporary, all of that, because that foundation will allow you then to determine where you want to go with it. Uh, you may decide that you hate handwork. You don't want to do any corsages of any type. So when I say, OK, I want you to wire and tape for three minutes, you hate me. Um, but that's OK. It's only three minutes. You can do anything for three minutes. Uh, but start with that as your foundation. And then from there, you can decide what is it that you love the best. Is it that you want to go further into wedding? Is it that you want to broaden your base on all things, going into advance? Is it that you love handwork and you just want to really focus on that fine detail work? Then you can hone in on that. And then while you're doing that foundation, it also helps you start determining what your personal style is so that you can expand upon that. Because once you have a style, I think it's easier to have customers because they know what your look is and how things come together. They know what they come to you for. Um, I, they know your brand. I sort of hate that branding. But it's true. You want people to understand what type of work you do because those are the customers that you want so that they will come to you. So what other questions do you have? I know you've got questions. Ask away. I'm going to design. He told me and Carol will be watching for your questions and they'll make sure I hear them they talk about them because we've got plenty of share. We've got 30 minutes left, so we've got plenty of time, way more than three minutes. And he told me what you got there. Yeah, Diane from Facebook. She's asking, how is that container made? Uh, are there test tubes in the barge branches? Uh, you know, this was a container that I purchased pre-made. I did not make it. And it is 
birch that's just kind of zigzagged back and forth with wood between it to hold it in place. So it's all been stapled together. And then I just took, it came plain, but then I took individual big test tubes and tucked them in. And it's tight enough that they just wedge into place. Uh, and so I, these are test tubes that came on orchids that I've purchased over the years. And I always save them, you know, reuse, research, repurpose, recycle, all of that. Um, and so I went to my cupboard and got my extra tubes and got them out. And then I can just set them in place. And the orchids just nestle in perfectly. You can see how easy it is to make this be lovely. Now, orchids like to talk to each other, so I might turn it so that the faces kind of start looking towards each other, adjusting which ones are where so that their faces are all incorporated together. And then I'm looking for the better blooms. Some of the blooms are a little bit damaged. So I don't want to use those, so I'm just kind of searching through here and then placing them in and then adding it, trying to decide which direction I want it to go. So I have to match its stem to its face. There we go. I kind of like that. And then going back and adding in additional blooms and trying to determine what's really going to work with this container of these flowers. Uh, I could do some roses. They don't really have the right hue. It just is a little bit off, so I think that would be bad. And if I went to white, you don't think that's good because the white and brown just is too garish together. So you kind of experiment back and forth to see what items kind of look good. Kind of like that. I think I could use some of those in there. While I pull some other flowers, Carolyn, what's going on? Yeah, Lynn has a really great question. Do you remove the orchid's nose that she was taught that it prolongs the life of the bloom? You know, when I first started in the world, I was told to take that little nodule off, and you probably can't even see it. But you know what? I think that is false. And it is not done any longer. Um, and so, no, I would say leave it. But I had heard that as well. And back in the 70s, that was one of my jobs, was to remove that little tip. But it really is not something that needs to be done. So, no, um, I would not take it off. Uh, I would leave it be. There, that, does that look good on camera? That one? Yes. It does? Okay, that's the color I'll use then. It's like, okay, I've got to figure out what color I can use. They aren't looking right under the lights. It's like, oh no. But this one is good. This is a toffee rose with the bronze cymbidium. So it works well together. One of our graduates, actually she's not a graduate yet, one of our students who is getting ready to submit her final exam um, had reached out to me with a couple questions about the final and what the expectations were and, and how best to be successful. And she said she was so excited to be getting the basic completed and get that certificate which would then allow her to go on into the advanced because she felt like it gave her, and I love this, hang on, it gave her a license to learn. And I told her, I'm gonna steal that because I thought that was one of the greatest things ever, a license to learn. Basic floral design is a starting point. It's not an end point, it's a jumping off. It's where you then go, okay, I've got my basic now, I have a license to learn, what else do I want to know? How cool is that? I just thought that was the greatest thing ever, the license to learn. So Diane, thank you for sharing that with me because I thought that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So going back to 
Rick and his question about the social media that he posed to the two people, I pose a question to you. Do you think it's worth your time and your effort when you're scrolling through social media to like and comment? And is that something that you make an effort at? Yes or no? Is it worth the effort? Because I just thought it was such a, such a, a wise commentary. It's like, huh, so we're on social media, we're trying to promote our businesses, we're all trying to do more and better and all of that, and how best can we support each other, and is it worth it? So what do you think? Do you think that it is worth your time to go through and add comments and such? Got some more millets, some more grasses. I'll have to be honest, even my personal life, not just my business life, I follow that three minute rule because, you know, there's never enough time to do everything. We all have too much on our plates. But I like to live in a clean house. Don't we all want to live in a clean house? But I don't want to spend my whole life cleaning house. And so I will set a timer and like, I am going to do this for 10 minutes. I want to do it for 10 minutes. I know that's more than three. But then I stop, then I go play. So there may be something that you can pick up there from your own home, how to make it so that you get to go play and don't have it take over your life. Carol, anything? Yeah, I have a great quest question from Karen. Uh, she is wondering, once you find your style, how do you find your customers? Ah, so great. Great, great, great question. So once you know the style that you want to create and that this is what you do well and you want to sell this, how do you find the customers to buy that? Uh, and that's something that we started incorporating into class two because social media is how you find customers, how you find jobs, how you find your place in the world. And so a lot of it is making sure to get pictures of your personal style and then showing that style in social media. Put another tube in here. I don't need water because this is dry, but I need the tube as a holder. So I'm putting that in that way. I can put this one right there. But getting your pictures that show your style and then posting that on social media so that customers can see what it is you do and then making sure to hashtag your area so that the customers in your area can find you. And hashtag is always like, oh my gosh, what do you mean hashtag? And that's something we'll talk about in class too because it's the new world and if you're part of it, great. If you're not, you need to learn enough to be dangerous. And you don't have to know everything, but you do need to know enough to help your business thrive and be successful. And it takes, takes a little bit of effort but not a lot of effort. Um, again, focus it down to the three minute rule. If you don't have time, that's okay. But you do have three minutes. So just give yourself three minutes and you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. If you don't set a deadline, you could be there for three hours as a time suck and still not accomplish what you wanted to do. So you've got to set a deadline, you've got to make rules for yourself. Um, and the three minute rule is a handy one and it works in so many different ways. So now I've kind of filled in the back side here. I'll flip it around so you can see. I'll put it back on my turntable so that you can see all sides. There we go. And we'll bring it around. You can see how I fill in the back. Now I need to fill in the front a little more. I see that it's actually a little bit there. So let's see, maybe I'll put in some of this grass because I like this. So adding some to the front, which you could see the holes and I couldn't. So that's the benefit of the turntable and you're working. You can 
find your holes that maybe you had missed. So I'll put this in here and turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe a little bit more of the millets. While I'm finishing this up, you told me or Carolyn, what else was happening? I'm pretty quiet today. You guys are quiet. Hey, no fair. I'm up here talking away and you're not talking back. Come along. I know we all have busy lives. I'm trying to help you figure out how to do everything you want to do in three minutes. And you gotta have me help me a little bit here. So you can see how I just filled in a little bit, creating a textural tapestry and keeping the lines moving vertically and horizontally, looking things inwards towards the focal emphasis area, repeating textures, getting all the things that we do in basic photo design into one arrangement. I have a couple of great comments um, here on YouTube about social media. Christine says, enlist someone younger and more social media savvy to help you get your designs posted if it's a struggle. That is true. Um, collaborate. And that's something we all can do together. Find someone who's really exceptional and maybe share tasks where you help them with something else that you're good with and then they help you with something that you're not so good with. And if you put the two heads together or three or four or five, it really does help and it makes it easier and better. I know when we do flower school, I encourage you to set your arrangements in a vignette to take a picture because that gives you something to add to your collateral that you can then use for other things. We look at shooting in different angles and different places so that you can try a variety of style techniques of shooting, which then helps you figure out your personal technique and design. And it really does make a difference, a big difference. Okay, I'm going to set this website. What do you think? Do you like it? If there's somebody out there that you think should be joining us, share this video out. Share it, tag a friend, like it, thumbs up, all those things. I'm asking you to help us out. And if you know somebody that should be subscribing to the YouTube channel, please ask them to do so. so let's see how fast we can get 800 people into our subscriber base so that we can watch that pop up to 100,000 so that we can have a celebration. I think that calls for a champagne party. I mean, anytime you hit a milestone like that, it deserves a party. So I need you to help me have a party. How about that? We'll pop a bottle of champagne and celebrate and have a really wonderful time. So now, put my things back in water because you don't want your flowers just sitting out. This was the shorter vessel that I had set aside to use. If you watch the preview, you know that those are the three that I had set back here. And this one has water in it already. And I did the water up towards the top because I'm not using the wire. So I don't have to worry about that. That way the flowers can just go directly in. Then I look at what materials I have left. And I think I'm going to use some of the Brasilia just because the color is so perfect with this vessel. Isn't that beautiful? It's a really lovely product. Um, some people are allergic to it, so you have to be a little bit careful. It is one that gets me sometimes, so I'm like, oh. But I like it so much that I suffer through it, and that's just the way it is. Um, placing it in, maybe a little bit more. I know I was gathering supplies for class. Um, the in-person starts September 12th. And I was at the market yesterday getting the last of the supplies that we were out of that needed to get replenished to make sure we had enough for everybody. And it was so much fun. And, you know, getting new stuff is the best. And so I now have every supply that we need. It's all in stock. We're ready for you. Uh, and then I updated my flower list. I'm like, okay, it's late summer, early autumn. What's in bloom? What's local? What's fabulous? What do we have to have? And so I was going through and updating my list, and it was just like, oh, it's been, you know, we haven't had flower schools since 
May. And so we've been on our summer break, and I feel like a little kid in a candy store. And I even bought new school shoes just because, you know what, that's what you do for the first day of school, you have to have new school shoes. So you can come join me and you'll see my new school shoes. If you join me online, I'll just have to wear them and tell you that I'm wearing them, but um, it'll be too much fun. But tell me what you got there. Yeah, Anna from YouTube is asking, would you recommend a beginner to practice with artificial flowers and learning to create arrangements? Ah, uh, good question. Um, when you're a beginner, should you start with some artificials and get some of the theory down? Artificial is quite a bit different than fresh. And so you've got to do fresh as well, but to build up speed and repetition and to get your skills honed, yes, having some artificial blooms can be a good way to test things. Then you may discover that you really like artificial flowers and that they sell well for you. Um, the artificials and dryads both are getting more and more popular. So you may discover that it's an item that you add to your sales materials and that you do it on a regular basis, not just as a way to practice for fresh. So yes, you could definitely practice with the artificial. When you come to doing your flower school submissions, we like you to do those with fresh because it's usually a little bit trickier and it forces you to really know how those stems behave and then as you watch them mature it helps you learn how flowers live and how they'll last so definitely doing that is good um, the other benefit of fresh or of silk of the permanence would be that you would be able to take it apart and do it again, take it apart and do it again, take it apart and do it again. Because it really takes three times to get really good at something. And so if you're doing it with permanence, you don't get them quite as dog-eared. You can take them apart if you need to make the stem longer. You can wire and tape it. You can do that. Uh, with fresh, I still tell you to take it apart and do it again because I think that's important to get that repetition, but the stems get shorter and shorter and shorter to where it starts being a little bit tricky. Um, and so, yes, you could do that, definitely. Debbie had a great suggestion that you should put um, when we hit the $100,000 mark on YouTube, should post that on Tulip People so that everyone can join us in a champagne celebration. You know, maybe we should do a champagne live stream. Wouldn't that be fun? Huh. We could all get together, you know, and get yourself a glass of sparkling cider, Perrier, champagne, whatever, and then we all toast together. I think that's an excellent idea. So. Guys, I'll be watching to see what it is. You guys be watching too. Help us get that 100,000, and we'll do a champagne live stream. That would be too much fun. We'll have to figure out exactly when, where, and how, but I vote yes. I think that's a great idea. Let's get the super tulips on it. We'll get everybody going. So yes, excellent idea. Good job. So now, I decided I had to work in the round since I have my lovely turntable, thanks to Kim. Kim, shout out to you again, thank you, because yes, we're going to have fun with this. And so thanks to Kim, we have the ability to work in the round and spin it around and just make it be fabulous and see it from all sides. Of course, then I'll forget where my front is, but if I'm working around, it should always be front everywhere, correct? So I guess I don't get to use that. <laughs> oh. So how long do you think, this is a good question for you, this could be a contest, 
how would we figure it out? Oh my gosh, I don't know that we can do it. This is not a contest. Take that back. I'm not going to go there. But let's do just speculation. What day do you think will hit 100,000? Just type in the date that you think we're going to hit 100,000. And then we'll see who gets closest. And then we'll make sure you're at the champagne party as well so that we're celebrating. So what day do you think? Susie and I had a conference this afternoon, or this morning actually, and we speculated when we think it's going to happen, and we'll see what you think, and if you agree with us. I'm not going to tell you what we thought, because I don't want to skew your opinion, but let's, everybody in there, so there, I don't know, there's what, 50 of you watching? I don't know, whoever many are watching, let's get that many guesses as to when we're going to hit 100,000 on YouTube. Hmm. Uh, Debbie, Debbie commented and said, September 6th, it's my birthday. <laughs> ah, okay, so if we're going to do it for that type of thing, I'm going to vote, well, I can't vote for that. I was going to say, I'm going to vote September 7th because that's my anniversary, but um, I can't vote because I could skew the report, and that's not fair, so I take my vote back. But So September 5th, was it, is her birthday? T September 6th. 6th, okay. So who else has a guess as to when we're going to hit 100,000? <laughs> Rose says by Friday, and then... Um, <laughs> I think that's pretty extreme, <laughs> but and wouldn't that be wonderful? Right, and then Tess says um, by October 25th. Oh, don't make me squirm that long. Oh, that's hard. October 25th, I want it sooner. I just, I get so excited about these things. Like, oh, I want it now. Actually, I want it yesterday, but I don't get that. So I've got chrysanthemums, I've got roses, I've got a gonus, and I'm just spinning it around. And what else shall I put in here? I've got so many odds and ends of things. Should we try a little bit of blue in there? Do you think that would be pretty? They are so lovely. Echinops are just so interesting. And echinops are one of those things that will dry and look just as beautiful. Um, if you want them to be slightly more vibrant in color, you can take and just give them a little bit of tint with airbrushing um, and get them just that little bit more blue. But they're so pretty, even just in their natural state, because they stay pretty vibrant, even dry. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Removing the leaves, the leaves are not as attractive. They don't hold quite as well. So any more date guesses in there? Yes, uh, Christine says September 21st is her birthday. Uh, Janet, October 15th. Fanny says tomorrow. <laughs> September 21 is my sister's birthday as well, so that's a good day. Excellent. And then Sandy says September 20th because that's her 53rd anniversary. 53rd. Congratulations. That's fabulous. Oh, you know, it makes my heart warm when I see these long, long, long lasting marriages. It's just it shows the amount of effort you put into love, and that's great. So we've been talking the three-minute theory and what you can do in three minutes. And at one point, David and I were playing with it with the three-minute theory that we could run. And we thought, well, we can run because it's only three minutes. We can do that. Do you know three minutes is an eternity when you're running? It's an absolute eternity. But you know what? We both got to where we could run multiple miles. It was pretty much magical. And the only way we did it 
was by focusing on three minutes. So if you're thinking about trying to make a life change and you're thinking, oh, I want to be a florist, I want to be a flower business, I want to this, that, or the other thing, think about it in three minute increments and think, okay, what can I do for three minutes to get there? Maybe it's going on to the YouTube channel and watching one of the Tulip Tuesday videos because you know that they're going to be less than three minutes. And you can do that. You've got the time. Maybe it's learning a new flower name, but you just focus on that name for that day and you spend three minutes trying to memorize a variety. Maybe it's turning on your flower school lessons and going, okay, I'm really busy today, but I'm going to take three minutes and watch this lesson, and that way it'll be in my brain, and then as I go about my business today, I'll have that in the back of my head, and I'll just be thinking about it, and I'll be studying just through the background, and that's three minutes that you invested in yourself, that you invested in changing your life to make it better. Because if you do nothing, nothing's going to change, period. And so if you're happy, then do nothing. Just leave it exactly where it is. But if you're looking for something different, you don't have to make a drastic change. You can do small incremental changes. Think about three minutes. That's all I'm asking for is three minutes of attention to you. Let me see what other things I'm going to put in here. Um, but three minutes that's just focused on you, your future, your career, your happiness, your life. But don't look at the big picture. The big picture can be overwhelming, and then you do nothing. You just give up. But if you break it down into the smallest little pieces, three minutes, you can do it. My Monday and Tuesday were kind of like that. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get things done. I have too much. My list is enormous. I hate my life. What am I ever going to do? I can't stand it. And I finally like, okay, pick one thing. Do that one thing. And I did. You know what? It was done. I was like, wow, okay, that's done. Then pick one more thing. And don't think about the 20 others that are still on that list, because that's when you give up. And you just go, never mind, I can't do it. Pick one thing. So my challenge to you today, as we're finishing up our hour on the three-minute theory, is what is the one thing that you're going to do in your life that will make a difference in your tomorrow? What one tiny little thing are you going to do? Take a moment. You don't have to type it in because it's probably personal. If you want to, you can. It may be something you want to share to make yourself be held accountable. You know, that's something you got to think about. Okay, I'll share if you'll share. You hold me accountable. I'll hold you accountable. Okay? I told you that David and I used to run. Well, I have not run for three years. I have not run for three years. Not run for three years. I decided that I needed to invest in my health and take care of myself and self-care. So I started running two weeks ago. So I've only been a runner for two weeks. I cannot run three miles. I cannot run two miles. I was running though. But then, two weeks ago, well, maybe a week ago, a little while ago, I did run two miles, and I hurt myself. <laughs> so now I can hardly walk because I ran two miles. So I'm not running right this minute, but I am going to run. So I want you to hold me accountable that I get back out there, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run for three minutes, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run for three minutes, and I'm going to run for three minutes. I'm not going to run two miles because that hurt. Um, I'm not strong enough for that right now, but I'm gonna run for three minutes. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow to hold myself accountable for being a better person and a better 
help for myself. So what are you going to do to improve your life in three minutes? If you want to, type it in. I'll go back and look later, and I will hold you accountable. I'll be on your side. If you don't want to type it in, write it down. Write it down at home and put it in front of you so that you're holding yourself accountable. Do not just go, oh, well, maybe. No. Set a three-minute goal. And it may be a 10 minute, it may be going to flower school, it may be subscribing to the YouTube channel, but set a goal. I always call them three minute goals, but set a goal. You hold me accountable, I'm going to hold you accountable, and together we're going to be better. We'll all be better. Now next week, Teacher Carolyn's going to be right here. And she's going to be talking about autumn weddings, something she is well versed in because she's done far more weddings this year than any of us ever really want to do. Um, if you've got wedding questions, come prepared. She'll be ready to answer them. And then I will be in Orlando with Teacher Michelle. We'll both be at the, at the Society of American Florist Convention. So if you're in the Orlando area, reach out. Maybe we can see you there. And hopefully, that's why we've been practicing with the remote lives, I'll be able to do some lives from there and maybe show you the new varieties and the trends and such that I kind of come upon there. So hopefully, I'll see you next week. I know you'll be here with Teacher Michelle, or Teacher Carolyn, excuse me, get the right one. And now for today, I think we're done. I went a few minutes, I went three minutes over. No, I don't know. But I went a little bit over. Thank you, Caledonia. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Tony. And thank you to you. And please, go subscribe to YouTube. Share it with your friends. I'll go back and read through the comments and see what dates you picked. And also see what you intend to do to make your life better, starting now, get out there and do something you love.